G'day, my name's Nurchin, and today we're taking to the vast and uncharted seas, but we must be careful, for here there be sea monsters. What are sea monsters? As long as man has been able to dream, they've looked out across the ocean and thought, I bet there's scary <coughs> shit in there. And they were right. But were they actually monsters? Or another question could be, what is a monster? Well, the term is pretty vague, but in this case, it typically means something that's giant in size, terrifying in appearance, and typically with evil intent. Simple enough. Now, this is a pretty large topic, as we have monsters from all across the globe and spanning back thousands of years. Luckily, we have a map. Literally. For this video in particular, we'll be referencing the creatures that decorated the maps of old. Just like the maps of the land, these monsters were drawn as warnings, often meaning that part of the ocean was uncharted or there were serious dangers in that area. A good example of this is Skyla and Charybdis from Greek mythology. Skyla had six heads and twelve feet and would attack from the caves at passing ships, while Charybdis would sit on the opposite shore, swallowing and spitting large amounts of water trying to drag boats in. They were actually an idiom for dangerous waters, with Skyla being a dangerous reef and Charybdis being a whirlpool. There are even instances where these monsters have been placed on maps to deter people for personal reasons. Maybe making foreign sailors think twice before invading your country, or to protect some islands where you've buried some treasure. So now we know why they are there, but what are they? What is this? And what is that? And that's just a lobster. But we'll worry about the B-roll later. At first we're going to have a look at the legends, and where better to start than the Leviathan. The Leviathan is a biblical creature referenced heavily throughout the Jewish religion. To summarize, it was an enormous dragon of the sea that, when it threatened life on earth, had to be destroyed by God. We can actually see similar stories across multiple religions, and even within Judaism, it's appeared as a sea dragon, a giant serpent, and a whale, but in the end, the result's always the same. A creature of such impossible size, it had to be destroyed by the gods, with some people quoting lengths of over 300 miles. So, were people actually seeing this creature out on the waters? Well, no. God killed it, remember? Making some fish and chippies. But they make for a pretty good idiom. These waters hold a threat so great, no mortal man could survive. An exaggeration, maybe, but it gets the point across. The alternative is that they were just seeing whales. It's a pretty common interpretation of the Leviathan, and the word even means whale in modern Hebrew. But just keep in mind, the largest whales ever recorded, that being the blue whale, only just passed 100 feet, almost a third of the size of the Leviathan. And that brings me to a pretty important point, size. Now, if you've ever heard a bloke talking about fishing or maybe bragging in a locker room, you might know that size can be subjective. Not to mention, half of these sailors would have been delirious with malnourishment and sickness, so it's not unlikely that they might exaggerate once getting back to shore. And on the note of size, that brings us to our next creature, the Aspidoshalone. I don't think that's how it's pronounced, it sounds like a perfume. The Aspidoshalone is a creature, a whale or a turtle, that is so large, sailors mistake it for an island. It waits for ships to land against its back before dragging them to the bottom of the ocean and eating them. Again, considering the size of the world's largest creature, this doesn't seem that likely. But I can definitely imagine a ship bumping into the back of a whale and the rumour mill spinning the rest. So we've seen warnings of impossible danger and suspicious islands, but what about just plain danger? The warning tape of the ocean? Well, you'd be hard pressed to find an old map that didn't exhibit the fabled sea serpent. With long serpentine bodies, these creatures have been depicted with the heads of snakes, fish, bad, and most commonly, dragons. They need little introduction and have been seen in religions all around the world, but that's the interesting part. If these creatures have appeared in cultures all around the world, some that have never met each other, then they must have seen something to inspire the idea. One theory is that sea serpents are misidentified pods of dolphins or porpoise. From a distance, them bobbing through the water could look like one continuous creature, and it would even explain the appearance of their head. Another more common theory is that the sea serpent is a very real creature known as an oarfish. These creatures look completely alien, 
can grow up to 11 meters long and are incredibly rare. They are almost never seen alive and are mostly found dead and washed ashore. In the 18th century, they actually found one of these things and they said, yep, that's a sea serpent. They didn't so much misidentify it, there just wasn't a proper name for one yet. So it's worth keeping that in mind when considering these other monsters, such as the king of monsters, the Kraken. Release the Kraken. Spawned from Norse mythology, the Kraken is an octopus-like creature, supposedly a mile and a half long, that lies at the bottom of the ocean. It could wrap up entire boats and drag them down into the water, or if that didn't kill you, the amount of displaced water would cause a whirlpool. Big old nasty calamari. But was it real? The most common theory is that the Kraken is a misidentified giant squid. It's kind of chicken or the egg, if the squid inspired the myth or if the myth was there first. But it's not surprising that sailors jump to these conclusions. Whales eat these giant squids. So they'd capture a whale covered in suction marks and scratches from a beak, cut it open and find giant tentacles inside. Or maybe you're just looking into the water at night and spot an eyeball the size of your head. Giant squid seems to be the most likely answer. Or if you go far enough south, maybe it was a colossal squid. But some zoologists of the past believe the kraken may have existed. While the evidence is kind of weak, some ichthyosaur bones were found arranged in a pattern similar to how an octopus leaves bones after they've eaten. One of these fossils even showed signs of constriction, which further supports the octopus theory. And octopus bodies don't fossilize easily, so we may never know if the Kraken was just a prehistoric creature of the past. So there we have it, the legends of the sea. Hey, hey, don't forget about us. Okay, so not everything is dragons and serpents. Time to have a quick look at the honourable mentions and what we know them to be today. Lobsters. Not even monster lobsters, just really big lobsters. Now, to be fair, lobsters continue to grow as long as they live, so there's no maximum size as far as science is concerned. In theory, if a lobster could live long enough without dying, then they could reach these sizes, but I don't know, it doesn't seem likely. Also, why are they so aggressive? Across a lot of these maps, there are these pig or ball-like creatures, typically with tusks. They appear to be strange interpretations of the humble walrus. Even the stranger ones with trunks appear to just be elephant seals. Though, I'm not sure why they have tusks as well. And speaking of tusks, we have narwhals. Sometimes with incorrectly added swordfish bills, and sometimes with incorrectly everything. A lot of these creatures were just added as decoration, which means they weren't based on anything such as the sea goat. Shout out to any Capricorns watching, you cold-hearted bastards, which is a purely mythical creature. The, the sea goat, not the Capricorns. And of course there's mermaids. They're mostly just used as decoration, you know, to source things up a bit. And while many sailors believe mermaids existed, that's definitely a topic for another video. Disclaimer. And finally there's this. Hello. The sea monk, or the bishop fish. Fishermen found this creature that appeared to be some kind of fleshy humanoid that dressed like a priest. It even had the tassels. It refused to eat or talk until it died. In another story, it could talk. It begged for its freedom and it signed the cross as it swam away. It was a squid, okay? It's just a big squid. Why won't you talk, you strange man? The maps they used to make were fantastic, and the creatures on them, amazing. Some of them. These people weren't stupid, they just didn't have access to the information we have now. These sea monsters served a purpose, and in some cases, they were kind of accurate. Some very accurate, considering how little information they had. And I must clarify, the explanation to what these people saw are just educated guesses. Maybe they really are fantastic beasts hiding at the bottom of the ocean. Or maybe they just went extinct many years ago. Not this though, that's a squid. Oh. 